Mind Your Farm Business on realagriculture.com is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Welcome to the Mind Your Farm Business podcast brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. I'm Sean Haney, founder of realagriculture.com and host of Real Ag Radio on Rural Radio 147, Sirius XM. You can find more episodes of this podcast by going to mindyourfarmbusiness.com. Today's topic on the Mind Your Farm Business podcast is all about return on investment, a term often referred to in business classes, but rarely analyzed in primary agricultural production. ROI calculations can provide clarity in decision-making and internal business analysis. Although a simple calculation, it does have limitations and constraints of which need to be considered in your analysis. Today's guest on the Mind Your Farm Business podcast is David Widmer. He's with Agriculture Economic Insights based in Indiana. David and I will break down how you calculate ROI, use benchmarks, and considerations to make your ROI percentage more meaningful. David, how are you doing today? That's great. Doing well. Glad to connect with you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to today's discussion on return on investment, ROI. So if I'm a producer, why should I be concerned about ROI at all? Well, it's a really great, um, I guess, uh, mental model to start to go put your thinking into. And it's really helpful because you start to unpack all these nuances. And so... As a producer, you should start thinking, okay, what are the additional costs? What are the costs associated with it? What are the assumptions that are going into these projections that are being made? And then, of course, what are the types of the ranges of outcome? I think um, one of the uh, best examples is um, home insurance, right? None of us buy home insurance expecting a positive ROI or hoping for a positive ROI from buying home insurance. But if you think about the range of possible outcomes that might occur, there's probably a 95 or 99% chance that you'll never have to use your home insurance policy. But when you do have to use it, it's going to have a big asymmetric payout. and It's going to help in a really bad outcome. Maybe buying a lottery ticket is similar, right? You don't, there's a low outcome of it happening, but when it pays out, it pays out huge. So producers need to think about ROI in a way that allows them to think about those ranges of outcomes. And for a lot of the producers that are like, ah, okay, you know what? Th- this, that makes sense to me. I need to start looking at some of my purchases this way, whether it's capital or it's product related. How do I calculate ROI? What's, what's the answer to that? How, how do I do this? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, again, it, the devil's in the details. Uh, and so the, the first thing to really think about here is, you know, what are the returns that you're expecting to generate from this this decision or what would this decision generate? And then the other piece, so it's returns divided by investment. And it, again, it seems pretty simple at the surface, but as we start to dive into what should I be including in that, that starts to become uh, a little bit tricky. And so producers just need to, you know, create their own processes and create their own standards of what they want to include and what they, you know, don't think is worth including. And that could, kind of create their own SOP there and then start to look at it for, and we've talked about a lot for products and decisions they make, but you could also look at it in terms of, you know, your entire operation. What sort of return are you generating across, across the operation? That could be a way for benchmarking your performance over time. Yeah. You think about it from a, a farm that has you know, maybe a livestock operation, a, a grain component. You know, you you can look at ROIs for each of those operations independently and see, you know, Billy, we're doing really well on the grain side, but our livestock business has got a really low return comparatively speaking. You know, should we be in that business, right? Or hey, you know, maybe we should get into livestock because you know, we've done some numbers and it looks like we can get the ret- you know a really good return. It would really add diversification to our farm. It, it really comes down to allowing you to make clear decision making. Right. So as, as a producer, uh, we would pursue a lot of these things, but we have two things that get in our way, uh, two limitations, and it's time and capital. And so an ROI calculation can be really helpful for us to understand how should we deploy the next unit of capital we have or the next unit of time that we have. And so we really have to think critically about how should I prioritize 
uh, all of those things that I wish and I hope to do in the future. And doing ROI calculations can help you think about how you line up those priorities. Why do you think in in the business context of agriculture, we don't talk about ROI a lot. Although if you were to open a book on Business 101, ROI would be one of the first definitions they would probably teach you, but it doesn't come up much in ag. What, why is that? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, uh, you know, thinking about it from the farm management side, uh, ROI can be challenging in agriculture. I think one of the ways is we, thinking about farmland, one of our, our, I mean, one of our biggest investments, we hold it for a long period of time. And so um, it gets hard to sort of plan out into the future. And I think another way that makes it difficult in agriculture is there's a lot of uncertainty and weather can have a lot of uncertainty. So, you know, what, what can I say project for a return in 2021 uh, for buying this acre of farmland? Well, weather is going to be, be a big part of that. So I think that starts to become some of the elements, the long duration and some of the uncertainty. And, and I think that doesn't, we shouldn't use that as a pass for not calculating ROI, but we should, you know, recognize that up front before we dive into to some of our own calculations. Yeah. And it doesn't just come up from a land purchase perspective. <laughs> I was joking with you earlier about maybe we don't know, maybe we don't want to know what that operational return on investment would be for that purchase of land as land prices continue to rise across North America for, for farmland. But from an aspect of you know using a product, right? It's you know what's the ROI of this input purchase or adding you know increasing the amount of fertilizer I'm using. If we know some of those numbers, it can really really improve our decision making and whether or not we should be purchasing that product or not. Right. To go back to the farmland example one, just for real quick, uh, I think sometimes we would be it be sobering to realize what some of the ROI would be for some of the farmlands that we're making. Because I think one of the ways to think about it is, is the highest bidder on this farmland, do they think they're going to make more money on everybody else? Or are they just the person willing to take the lowest return uh, on that in, on that investment? So I think that's one way to think about it. But to your uh, point about the, the product, um, that is where we see it a little more frequently. Someone else is doing that calculation for us, and they're coming and using that as, as a way to convince us to buy another unit of of crop protection or adding another pass to our field or adding some more equipment. And I think um, that can be a helpful, uh, that's a valuable thing to know, but um, it can't be the last thing that we uh, think about. We have, when someone gives us the ROI, we really have to put on our investigator hat and roll up our sleeves and understand what are the assumptions they're using? What are they comparing it against not, you know, doing what are the alternatives that they're considering? Um, and we just have to be really um, vigilant whenever we have, or, or very cautious and careful and diligent when someone else gives us an ROI projection. We'll get back to the rest of my conversation on the Mind Your Farm Business podcast, but first a word from our sponsor, RBC Royal Bank. This episode of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast is brought to you by RBC. When it comes to your operation, a business plan can help you reach your goals. It's your roadmap to success. Be equipped to face the challenges of modern day farming head on and come out on top. Visit rbc.com slash chart your course and speak with an agriculture account manager near you. Okay, so if we are going to roll up our sleeves and do some of that research and investigation and, and calculate the ROI for ourselves, what are some of the things that we really need to consider to make sure that we're getting an accurate number? Well, and a lot of things in agriculture, uh, there are a range of possible outcomes. I think one of them that that a lot of growers will resonate with is, you know, fungicide application. And so we can go out there and put out a fungicide application um, here in, in the summer growing season. In some years, it's going to pay out huge. In some years, it's going to sort of break even. In some years, we might not see uh, any return. It might be close to a zero or, or negative ROI scenario. And I think we have to step back and see which one of those scenarios are they telling us uh, when they present that ROI information to us, what are they? Um, what are the assumptions about the likelihood of each of those outcomes if they're weighing those across all the, the possible outcomes? And I think we can ask, you know, do we know enough information to maybe know this is a good year to apply fungicide or an additional pass of fungicide, or is it, you know, not a year that it might have a big ROI for us? So that's one example. Another one I think is important is the framing of the 
uh, of the ROI. So it's easy to show a really big ROI uh, for doing, you know, practice one versus some other practice that, you know, doing nothing or, you know, so one big ROI you might be is, you know, the ROI of a new planner versus a 50 year old planner that needs to have a lot of repairs to it. And this is an extreme example, right? But we have to know, well, how does this piece of equipment generate such a positive ROI? What was it relative to? So we really need to understand what those base comparisons are. And we are comparing numbers. What is a good ROI? How do I, so once I figure it out and I have a number, what does that actually mean? Yeah. So I think, you know, if we think back to the investing world or the business world, well, they, they use this a lot. Um, they have a lot of benchmarks. Um, so, if you, you know, what's the ROI of the stock I just bought? Um, and, and they can compare three or four stocks really quickly. Um, but in agriculture, I think one of the challenges is what kind of ROI should you expect? And it's not as straightforward of having sort of a blanket benchmark or a single benchmark. So for some, uh, some things, we should probably be happy with an ROI that's, you know, small but consistent. So think about farmland. You might accept a 7 or 8%, maybe a 10% ROI on a farmland investment because you're going to be able to hold on to that for decades and decades. On the other hand, you might have to accept a really high ROI, or you'd be looking for a really high ROI, an average ROI, on something maybe like a crop protection input or, or a piece of equipment. Now, what, this gets to the next thing is sort of, if we calculate the ROI, we need to understand the range of possible outcomes that could be, uh, that we could experience, when in reality, the ROI is sort of an average of all those outcomes. So one possible range of outcome is you buy this additional unit of, of uh, input and it's guaranteed year in and year out. It's always going to give you a 10%. That's, that's easy, right? And that's kind of what we sometimes think about with the ROI. That's sort of the maybe an assumption we make. But another example is something that pays you 10% of the time makes a 100% return and 90% of the time makes a negative return. And so part of the investigation that we need to do as consumers of ROI is understand what that underlying distribution looks like. And in some cases, things with asymmetric returns or bimodal returns, we have to have a, a really strong, uh, really high ROI for a benchmark before we do that. And if you are going to be doing the comparison, be consistent in your calculation. Otherwise, it's not really a fair comparison whatsoever. Right. I think, you know... It, as a practice, as someone who sort of calculates ROI, I think ROI is like the last thing I do. I've, I've thought about my assumptions. I've thought about my methods. I've thought about the distribution. And ROI is sort of one thing that I can sort of summarize this, all this information I've already taken with me from. And, and I think the being consistent is very, very important. Two people, you give, even two people, uh, you give them a chance to do an ROI. They're going to have very different, uh, practices and very different um, methods for doing that. I'll give you one quick example. There's this idea of the marginal ROI. And so it's sort of this idea of if I'm going to apply this crop input. Uh, what, how much is it going to cost me additional and how much additional revenue is it going to cost me or generate for me? And that could potentially get you a high ROI. On the other hand, you could step back and say, okay, what does this entire production system look like? All my production costs, if I use this additional input and what's all my production costs and the alternative of not using this input. So are we using total costs and total revenue and looking at the difference or are we only looking at the marginal? And so sometimes those marginal, those marginal comparisons can generate huge ROIs on the surface, but we realize, Hey, we still have hundreds of dollars an acre tied up into this crop. Uh, and this is just one small piece of that bigger production system. David, thanks so much for joining us here today on the Mind Your Farm Business Podcast. Great to join you. Thank you so much. Making decisions on product uses or capital expenditures can be taxing, but one tool to provide clarity for your decision-making can be return on investment. The ROI allows you to manage your expectations and show how valuable the decision you are making can be. If you need help on calculating ROI on your farm, I encourage you to ask your accountant or use resources made available to you by post-secondary schools or farm business advisors. 
I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. If you have any feedback or comments, please email me at shaney at realagriculture.com or call the Real Ag Listener line 855-776-6147. Find more episodes of Mind Your Farm Business podcast at mindyourfarmbusiness.com. Thanks to RBC Royal Bank. And until next time, keep on minding your farm business.